So, um, yeah. apologies for the delay in getting started. Three of us uh, were all asking what the session was about, and it turns out that uh, uh, I asked for this session and registered it. So, um, classic failure. Um, so, the goal of this session is just a general feedback uh, session about. It was originally scoped around the idea of the tech board and how the tech board interfaces around, um, specifically uh, around uh, uh, Unity and Ayatana and how this intersects into Ubuntu. But Kate's made the, the valid point that this actually could be really interesting to just general feedback about the tech board and the release cycle and all that kind of stuff. So maybe we could just use this as a means to, to gather some opinion about how we did from a community process perspective of how some of these big changes are happening in Ubuntu, and then, um, and then David, wherever he is, yep. you've done some work on in better integration with the release cycle. Kate okay, was saying, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so maybe, so can, like with like maybe you can maybe you can summarize that work as well. Does that sound reasonable? Would that be a useful session? So, um, so why don't we start with Unity because that's the probably the elephant in the room. Um, not that big. Oh, no. <laughs> it's a small change. Uh, <laughs> you just did that. But that's actually the easy one. Yeah, we just deleted one panel. That's all you The dictator said it will, and so, okay, fine, it does. There's really no <laughs> point to discuss. So, <laughs> so I mean, it still doesn't mean it went well, but of course, right, the decision making but, process is pretty clear. Right. <laughs> but that's, 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 that's like implementation detail. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it's not something we are easily going to change. Yeah. Yeah. So if we have wedged up scroll bars signed up by Ayubach, then we've got to deal with it. <laughs> so scroll bars? Unity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. a dividing line. Yeah, yeah. 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 so that, that is it's a nice price. That's, that's a sore point, I think. It's a very sore point. Make all that because it's not here. It's not the same. Yeah? We work on it. So it's all just one new, yeah, never mind. Maybe, maybe a good way of, of structuring this is we, we do have a self-appointed benevolent dictator for life. And um, as, as much as we strive as a community, I think, to have a very open process, and I think the tech board do want to jump around that, community council and our various other government boards do jump around that. And we do balance that with, with some defined direction from that, um, of which some people will agree and disagree with. How do we feel like um, we, made some good progress in the cycle in terms of how that process and sets around things like Unity and the rest of it, how do you think we can make some improvements? So, personally, I think for what Unity, the amount of stuff we needed to do, it was always going to be slightly late and push the band, you know, it's going to push the dates of it. It's not something, it's not something that you're aiming for this cycle at all, because it doesn't work, it doesn't scale or anything. Mm -hmm. But it was always, you know, things were happening so late that Alpha Guru was going to be useless, the year one was going to be a whole lot better because we were like coding straight for two, three weeks. It did two even better. So, like, I can really, I can see the glaring things which was just really bad when we were dropping Unity. But it was like, could we really have changed it to such a big change? Like, we just needed to keep pushing. Right? Yeah, no, it, it was what it needed to be. Right. The only, the only sort of tweaks I would say was, you know, making sure that the drops that came in didn't land in conjunction with the rest of the churn coming in for the right, release. Right. And because it, like I say, one or two dimensions of chaos can be managed. Yeah. It's when you've got three or four dimensions right. hitting you simultaneously, the X changes together with the Unity changes. Made for an interesting week for a lot of us. Right. It's an interesting development part. I'm sure it did. <laughs> so the other thing I would say about that is because of the relationship between Unity as an upstream and Ubuntu, the development cycle is very different. For example, um, KDE feature freeze, the next KDE release is this week. Right. And, and so from here on out, we're like two weeks into our development cycle, KDE is going to be about fixing and stabilizing and moving forward to a good and stable release. Right. Whereas they're just starting in some respects. Yeah. And, and so I, I think in the long run, I mean, obviously this cycle will be what it will be at this point. But in the long run, I think if they were, were working towards a development cycle that was more like a normal upstream, right. it would help avoid some of this churn. Right. Yeah. 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 
So I think, I think for as far as we talk about the multiple dimensions, I think we've gone to a lot of sessions here, like the X and the that. I think that will hopefully be fixed for, well, oh, they're not doing the X, but for P, you know, and I think we're more aware of that problem. Yeah. Uh, well, so I have a question, um, particularly to the people who don't work clinical. Um, so, can you? <laughs> 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 um, which is one thing, I think, one, I think a pretty fair piece of criticism that's been leveraged towards our development cycle in the past has been that we've sometimes flaunted free studies. Um, I'm sorry? We've flaunted free studies. Well, great. Um, now, this cycle was weird, and we'd all agree it was weird because it was just all about trying to achieve this huge engineering uh, goal in the cycle. But the next, Mark's already made it very clear, this next cycle is going to be much more back to normal. Right. And I was wondering if, how you feel like we're doing in terms of protecting those dates around like UI freeze. And, 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 and freeze. actually, the bigger issues I had in terms of the things I looked at weren't really around Unity. In that I, I mean, for example, there was a post feature freeze change to give colors and dev comp and stuff to make it look, yeah. to, to, to make server look more. Ubuntu one. Right. Okay. Well, the thing is, the, the developer in question, I guess, thought, oh, I'm changing the UI, so it's before UI freeze, I can do whatever I want. Which, no, it's a feature. We're after feature freeze, yeah. you need to ask. It seems and, like, sorry, it seems like a lot of people, whether on purpose or not, mix up UI freeze and feature freeze. Yeah. Right. And, and, feature and freeze so, is like the warning before UI freeze. Well, well, right, and, and, and I mean, at least as I understand it, feature freeze, after that, any new feature, the release team has to review. UI freeze means you can't change the UI without talking to the docs and translations people. That so, doesn't mean it's, it's free for all if it's UI. Yeah. So just to be clear, I spent a lot of time in this cycle to be sure that we didn't break and I think we didn't break any feature freeze and any UI freeze without having the exception height. Right, yeah. It's a lot of paperwork, but it's something that we really respected and it was a flow, flow, flow. It, I it, like it, it, was not, it was, like I said, the but information was there the and there was some right. expectations. And, 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 the only and, and, one that was yeah, there I, I, I didn't see any of those issues with Unity. Um, I, I, this particular one was somebody who was working with good intent. I don't yeah. understand why he thought the freezes worked the way they did, because I thought it was clear. But apparently he's not the only one. So. Okay. Okay, so we've got another session on freezes tomorrow, right. and one of the things we really, one of the things we took away from that experience is, we don't have a clear enough definition. Yeah, so right. people who've been around for a long time, they have that knowledge built in point? of what yeah. this means. But if you go and look at the wiki pages, it's not necessarily yeah. clear right. what the definition so maybe, maybe is. Maybe we need to yeah, it's tease out this knowledge and, 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 and have a cycle work. Right, and, and that particular change was exciting because it had unintended side effects on everything. That he didn't really understand. It, it touched some flavors that, yeah, that, yeah and, it wasn't and, expected. Yeah, it was you know, doing something that was good for a good reason, but I think if it had gone through review, at least people would have said, oh, yeah. what's the impact of this? We need to look into that rather than it being in the archive, bam, oh my, how did that change? Uh, well, to be honest, it would have hit us the same way if he had uploaded it two weeks earlier before feature freeze. So that's true. I think it's not so much of an issue of freezes here, because quite frankly, it was before UI, so and it was not really a new feature. It only changed the UI without changing any extra button functionality. So I think this is more like a, a, a problem with planning this in advance and in, uh, in cooperation with other flavors. Right? Yeah. yeah. So I, I think I, this is not really a freeze measure, it's a planning measure in general. Yeah, I think my, my problem with that was essentially that it was from mid-cycle as, hey, there's something we need to do, or by the way, Mark wants it. Uh, yeah. Uh, th that would have been better discussed at UDS, and mm -hmm. then people could right. have I mean, raised the issues and talked about it. Right, I mean, it was an idea that was yeah. thought of mid-cycle, but it ballooned into significantly more work than it initially yeah. turned out, and that's what UDS is for. Right, and, and, and by the way, I really do appreciate your replanning your work to make sure that all got sorted out in the end. So, yeah. so I mean, this session is... This session is obviously, you know, heavily oriented around the tech board. Um, and one thing I'd like to ask for feedback on as well is, um, I think one thing that I found particularly interesting in the last cycle was the um, discussion around the install third-party software checkbox discussion, in which, um, oh, yeah. 
asking for freedom. <laughs> <laughs> so for those people who weren't familiar with this, basically there was a, there was a bug file around this, the, uh, the checkbox for install by like software by default, calls in codecs and stuff like that. Um, and a member of the design team basically wanted to have that checked by default and thought that it was a very, his, his rationale was, you know, this is a very, very small implementation change, it should be pretty easy, and it'll make Ubuntu a better experience if people want to watch YouTube videos or whatever else. And, and someone pointed the bug report to me, and the first thing I thought was, this is a tremendous policy change for Ubuntu. And um, I passed it on to the tech board and said, I'd appreciate it if the tech board could weigh in on this. And it struck me as a, um, the, the issue was resolved, I mean, unanimously. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but it struck me that there is a, um, there is clearly a, there is a, um, in, in, in this particular instance, in the design team, the, the understanding that it was a big policy change wasn't understood. And I'm wondering how we can better advise different teams in Canonical, um, different lines, members of the community. I, I must admit I did have a problem with the fact that it was a bug report with no, yeah, a bug report oh. must do this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, uh, it was concerning. I, I don't think that's bad for you, <coughs> but it was, uh, uh, it was, uh, it, I felt a bit high on this. Yeah. It seemed like, to me, it seemed like a real warning sign that right. I, you know, and I think room. the person who opened it was completely working in good faith, trying to do yeah, the right thing, sure. and yeah. they thought they had basically, it was a recognition, and I'm wondering if there's almost more, we need to do more socialization of some of the values and refresh it in people's minds, mm. because like I say, they went and they talked to the lawyers, things were fine from the legal perspective, and that was when they said yes, we can go forward, and so, so, no, it couldn't. So it was a bit of background information as well. I got on the phone with him um, shortly uh -huh. after this, and I agree, he was definitely good faith, I mean, yeah. but one thing that he didn't realize, so he had no idea about how the tech board works. Um, mm -hmm. He didn't realize, you know, because um, when the decision was made, I said, well, if you, if you think that the policy is, is incorrect, then you should raise it as an agenda item with the tech board. I mean, they have meetings, and this was all news. So I feel like maybe one thing, I don't know if people agree with this, but maybe one thing that we could do a better job of is helping to explain the, the function and the purpose of the tech board wider in the community. I don't know whether this is an isolated case. So, so I can, I can, sorry. <coughs> I was just saying, I'm a little bit confused of when the tech board comes into play. So, yeah. Right. Because so, so I'm thinking about how It seems like, I think, I think there's a misconception around the purpose of the tech board. I think sometimes some people think that the, the tech board makes decisions on package selection and things like that, whereas from a... Well, th to be fair, that's because we used to claim that we did. Yes. Yeah, yeah. uh, well, we fixed the, those web pages, right? I do think it's a problem that uh, people are generally not hugely aware of um, the tech board what it does because if... It, because people, if everything is working smoothly, we shouldn't need to be involved anyway. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the the tech board is uh, for for this for the for this purpose. The, the tech board's main involvement is arbitrating disputes, uh, making uh, making being a decision making body of last resort when the when people can't agree on, on it themselves. Um, that's not its only that's not its sole function, but the. Mm -hmm. But also, I think it sounds like then a bit of evangelism. I've, I've, I've got a practically stuck in action item, and we can change it, obviously. But basically, we need to evangelize the role of the tech board and what it is. Because Neil's got it, and I know I came in and I didn't 
wasn't initially aware. I was one of my learners this cycle was understanding where the tech board plays in through these cases. But if, if, if you know, if Neil and I are both seeing it, I think because people change over in the community so much, I think reiterating these messages is a good thing. So Definitely. With, with the tech board being sort of the last resort, what role does the release team have? I mean, so the release team is basically, okay, let's make sure we traffic marshal all of this in so it'll be coherent and basically we raise issues. Right, the release, the yeah. release team is the sort of ordinary group that's dealing with group. But, but, but it's, uh, normally. It, 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 it's a release team said no, it's too late. I, like I, I basically did an initial flag on that bug. I yeah. said, uh-uh, this isn't wrong. So I'm looking at it, these things from, and then it was basically, okay, how do we basically make sure we're lining up with the values of Ubuntu? And that's when Jono took it to the tech board, right. which was the right, right. thing but, to do. But, but so, well, so, so uh, a sort of a process question, coming back to Unity, yeah. was I was surprised that the whole let's evaluate the state of the unity came through the tech board rather than being driven by the police team. That was sort of a role that I would expect the police team to take. It, the, the borders are a bit fuzzy sometimes. Yeah. Uh, Same, uh, also my understanding both. is like the release team mainly coordinates all the freezes to make sure that they don't inter, uh, don't bite each other and then we still get <coughs> releasable images and that we have consistent archives. But this is sort of a, like a high level let's say political discussion and the release team does not really deal with this kind of community political like general they direction. They escalate up to the so tech board but right. it can't be figured out. So the release team is not meant to, to drive the direction of development. So the one, one, one point is that the tech board has much more obvious the um, constructive beat of art. It's, it's sort of because of the way the government structure is laid out. If what you want to do is to have a debate about whether this happens or doesn't happen and make it sick, then I can kind of understand doing that through the tech board. Um, I think either would be justifiable. Um, but I guess, I guess I think who, it was, who it wasn't was, too proud of it? Was it Rick? Uh, no, it wasn't. It was some. It actually, it was somebody I don't know. Somebody, somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> It was like, a, yeah, a community oh, yeah. member, and they raised it with the tech board. They could have just as easily taken it to the release team first, right. yeah. and then talked it through there, and then raised it to the tech board if, if right. it was if it was needed. I think but I think we had, it was, was very short time, that we, and you know, yeah. There, that there was, uh, yeah, as you say, there was a very short time involved um, hunting things around between different teams until something catches the ball. It's not necessarily the yeah. you know, I guess, the best way to process. I guess process wise. How are we determining whether something a feature should, you know, should make it into a release? And, and where should that? Yeah, yeah. We're so we're trying to evolve <laughs> beyond that. I want some. I this is why we're going for some different freeze milestones and things like that. Is literally understanding which packages and what the dependencies are and the interactions and getting a more visible but who has understanding. The responsibility to say no, or the authority to say no. I think that's that. Where's that? But I think the tech board. I mean, certainly the way I, I perceive it is that the purpose of the tech board is to define technical policy in Ubuntu. So for example, a good example of that is whether we use mono. Um, um, the kind of um, general values that we have in terms of Ubuntu, where I think the Unity thing was interesting is that to me the tech board's purpose there was, was, um, was really around, in many ways, the political implications for how that impacts our relationship with upstream and things like that. The decision about the functionality and whether it brings value to Ubuntu, in my mind, would be more of a release team kind of thing. So that's where it's kind of a fuzzy line, I think, is that it's kind of a bit of a... Right. Well, that's interesting yeah. because, like, I would say... I mean, as a member of the release team, I certainly feel quite empowered to say, no, this should not go in. Yeah. Right. Now, if you disagree with that, then you, then the tech board dispute resolution thing comes in. Yeah. yeah. Right. I can say that. And, and yeah. The release team is made up of various experts in various areas with different perspectives on the problems. I mean, ideally, there's like a whole series of steps that happen over time, and you don't have, at the very end of the release, there's suddenly this panic gets raised, flag. So you would have like the team themselves, maybe around feature freeze, starts thinking, okay, is this gonna make it, should we cut it off? And then, you know, from there, you might have some Hopefully more discussion earlier. happening. And, well, yeah, at the very Earlier. Point. Yes, earlier. People shouldn't normally be coming to the tech board for, uh, should this go into the release or not? As a general rule, but if it happens, then so, we'll I mean, often take it on. So, reviewing that though, 
as a consequence of burning the tech board, then it was decided that there was going to be analysis of what what was the state of the union, and that was, you know, the tech board prompted that. I was surprised that the police team didn't have that as part of its, you know, as part of the as part of the the process for striving to release is are our features in a state that we're willing to ship them, you know. Not necessarily saying that the police team should do that analysis, but that they should. The thing, the, thing, the, thing, the thing that's happening is it does sort of happen informally. It isn't happening because the release team is made up of members from each of sort of the constituent <coughs> communities who have a pretty detailed knowledge of what's going on in those communities. And so, you know, when issues come in on the we desktop and DXI, I'd be deferring. Yeah. Yeah. We got surprised. And, and, and no, we also have bias. That's true. Uh, yeah. but the, the, other, yeah. the other thing is that this, the release oh, yeah. team specifically should not do these major political decisions because, like, the technical board has been voted, so it, it has an official. Like the technical board is an official representation, and the members have been voted. Whereas the release team is more like a meritocracy kind of thing. Whoever has time for it, so it's not an official democratic body in the community. It's, it so like it, it should certainly not decide about major technical directions. It's, it's a meritocracy, like, though. As unity is a technical direction, it certainly has the state of the quality of unity, unity. at that point in time. <coughs> right, and reviewing that. It, so, it sounds like part of your feedback is that the, the discussion surrounding unity kind of seemed like it just it just happened and it wasn't planned. Like community members said, hey, what, what's going on? And then the discussion into is that essentially? I, I, I know that, that two things. Um, one, I think it was on, it was a line item on something that yeah. there would be the analysis. Yeah. Right there was and a plan for it and it didn't happen. All along, like you said, but I don't mm -hmm. know that that made aware of people <coughs> and like that person was encouraged to go to the tech board in this particular you know in some other form yeah. in the box yeah. as opposed to going to the release yeah. so I mean I do think that was kind of Look, yeah. I mean, I don't think that we should have got into a situation where we were having a last-minute argument. The fact right. that the fact that you're having a last-minute argument is about a major headline feature is what's going on somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Whether yeah. that's in yeah. development or communication or in analysis <coughs> or in the exceptions or or something. Um, and uh, the perhaps it's also yeah. going through yeah. some different. But I think there were, were mistakes in it and that we weren't better prepared for that discussion and had to scramble like the last minute to respond to the concerns of the rails. Probably just like Kate said, it wasn't clear. Well, I said this, but she said that people were evaluating it all along. But the, that, I mean, it was certainly implied. I mean, I knew that it was happening, but it wasn't formally stated that. But of course, people were evaluating it all the coming to the where everybody kind of chimes in. It's the state of where we are right now. The locker, you know. So I think people were evaluating it all along and coming to different conclusions, of course, as well. And uh, the the other thing is, I mean, it's, uh, we know perfectly well that there are people sweating blood over trying to get this ready, and um, there are colleagues as well. So there's, um, uh, I don't think we want to unnecessarily stop people. Because yeah, just ignore the part of this. You do, I don't like it. Don't be sorry, no matter what I'm talking about. Right. Uh, has anyone got anything else on that topic? Because I, I wouldn't mind changing gears a little bit. Which topic? Unity or? Unity in the tech board. OK. Um, just specifically the tech board. I, I have a question. Um, it feels like the tech board, the tech board always does a wonderful job from my experience, but it, it's, um, I think it serves a, a fairly reactive function. So usually it reacts to, there's an issue around this or this, this around this. And it's my design. Yeah, one thing I'd be, I'm curious to see, I mean, the tech board's filled with really busy people, and um, uh, I'm wondering around this, there's, um, so for example, we've, ha we've had some problems in the past regarding um, how, how well our developer approval processes work and things like that. I'm wondering whether there is a means for the insight from the tech board to be applied on a more regular basis. Well, uh, two, two things on that. Firstly, uh, 
I think we probably improved our developer process by having the tech board not do it anymore. At one point. <laughs> so I'm not sure we're necessarily the best uh, body to do that. Um, but secondly, we, we, did, we did discuss a while back, a couple of years ago, um, having the tech board every couple of months um, pick something that was clearly a significant issue and analyze it and have a take on it. And that's where, that's the, where the, 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 the agenda. Yeah. And that's okay. actually where the um, uh, mono discussion came from. We'll but that. Uh, we uh, that kind of fizzled out. Uh, I think it just Do you think that lost just, the competition for all the Right. Do you think, that, do you think that was that because there was there was not enough content to discuss? Or do you think it's just because you guys got busy? I think it's just that we got busy and okay. it never quite was. That requires somebody actively planning before each meeting to pull exactly. in the issues that are that are out there. Okay. Yeah. Right. And because either we have having having a having somebody who chairs all the time uh, was sort of fine with amount of time to do that, but. Uh, he hasn't really, and uh, we rotate the chair, and that's responsibilities to rotate too, which makes it more difficult. Right. In um, other contexts, if you look at organizations somewhat analogous to tech work, usually that sort of pulling the meeting together and finding out what should be done and building the agenda is a staff function. Somebody's doing that for the mm -hmm. people that are busy. Right. And, and that's, a, that's a function the tech work lacks, which mm -hmm. is and, and, and so it doesn't necessarily have to be the secretary. That's actually a really good, good point. I mean, I think, I think that would be useful to somebody who's not necessarily on the tech board, but to help provide some of the background and some of the content to serve that, that kind of function so that the tech board can essentially be applied in the most valuable area, which is, which is the right. assessment. Yeah, the, the tech board could certainly say, no, I don't like that agenda, I didn't want to do it. But <laughs> yeah, to, to have somebody bringing, you know, working to bring that together for them, I think is more likely to be successful. Mm. Like pre-digestion. Yeah. Pre we, we did that for a number of cases, like if some someone brought up the yeah. proposal, yeah. and we asked them to do more research or maybe uh, <laughs> give a more detailed find up about what they are proposing <laughs> and what the consequences are, then we can right. arbitrate. But that's one that's <laughs> on your radar screen. Right. To see it. Right. So it is, this this did happen, like especially on discussions on the mailing list. So we said, like before we are going to discuss it at the meeting, please write something more elaborate about it. Right. And I think we always have this option, and we did it. It's just not always done that uh, way. Related point I would make also is um, because I'm not subscribed to the tech board mailing list. Yeah. It's okay. hard to know what the tech board is going to talk about until it like happens. Yeah, it that's is, the wiki is, page about the agenda. Not. It is yeah. in this scenario where you can to I, I, I could. I, I was thinking that that ought to be more proactively advertised. I mean, is it it's kind of hiding in plain sight by now? Yeah, exactly. Here's your, I mean, because, for example, the, the bug that came up about um, um, making the non free software default. Now, I, I happen to be aware, become aware of that, but the, I, I, I might not have. And that yeah. was a discussion I was deeply interested in. in being there mm -hmm. yeah. Although that came up very quickly, didn't it? That was, it was like the day before the meeting or something. Right, but, yeah. right. but, but, but so the, the, right. there were going to be exceptions, but I, I think that there, there ought to be some advance, hey, here's the agenda for the next tech board mm -hmm. meeting, so that people are interested in issues know, oh, I want to participate in that one, I want to be there, I want, you know. Mm -hmm. So in terms of um, things that we can practically adjust, I mean, I'm just that we have some output from this session, um, it sounds like some of the, some of the threads that we, we, we've got is um, helping to helping people to better understand the function and the purpose of the tech board because it seems like there's some confusion, you know, in the community, but also in, in canonical. And I'd be happy to take an action to, to 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 document something and then run it past the tech board and make sure that everyone's happy and then to, yeah, to spread I, the message a bit. I, I don't want to make people feel like they have to come to the tech board for approval any time they do anything. That's, yeah, that's not the way we want to, to run things. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm concerned that bringing our function to front and center uh, will make people feel like they have an obligation to, mm. you know, like somebody's always standing over their shoulder. Yeah. Uh, and that uh, kind of thing is sometimes corrosive. So we should, we should be a little careful about that. Definitely, definitely. So maybe we can, 
articulate that in a way and then socialize that knowledge. Um, maybe even something as simple as like a frequently asked question thing could be useful around that. Um, and I, I, you know, I understand that um, some people uh, uh, <clears throat> like uh, knowing what the governance structures are, and some people are bored selling by it. Yeah. So because the bug, the, the third party bug thing, I think was interesting because the way I processed, processed it in my head was there was an implication. Like I can understand with. With that issue in question, I can understand not understanding that switching that checkbox on by default has a has a policy implication. That seems completely reasonable that a lot of people wouldn't get that. But I know that I thought was more of a problem than the not being aware of the government structure. Right, exactly. Yeah. But it seems to me that you know that seems to be the real <coughs> issue is understanding when there's a policy implication, right. because then it's natural that the tech law kicks in because that's the remit. Right. So maybe the issue isn't so much like is, is maybe the issue isn't ex ex expressing what the tech board so does. It's expressing when there's a policy implication. Well, but, but I mean, I don't think the individual knew. I mean, you could say no, no. A policy implication. Talk to the tech board. That wouldn't have helped in this case. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that understand. Like I'm think, trying to figure out a way in which he could understand that the it's not as simple as checking it. Switching the, you know, right. having the checkbox check. It's right. Well, the, the, I would say the fundamental issue <coughs> here is outside the distro team, there are a lot of people who work with Monaco who are not involved in free software and don't understand it. That's the root cause. Yeah, oh, right. yes. So that's what has to be. We're in rage and agreement. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of the way in which we can express the policy implications of design decisions in a way that. It's basically just cross-cultural training. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. it's like, this is what free software is about, and here's how you understand what people care about mm -hmm. and what's important. And, you know, I, I used to be in anthropology. I know about, you know, there, there, there's, like, little lessons you can give. And this whether might it's not be something that we can, like, solve with any kind of process or anything. Maybe it's no. just something we have to keep an eye out and then just... Social then, like, keep socialization and yeah. yeah. of the messages. Their, their lives will be a lot easier no, if they understand, just a, enough, if they understand right, enough so they're not frustrated they should, by... They should, they work for the yeah, yeah. they're working on a bunch they should understand they will. what we're about. Yeah. And I mean to say that, that may still come up though, because yeah. in yeah. their mind, Flash doesn't work, or Nvidia doesn't get, so whatever, right? right. But that's so, a feature, not a bot, and that's the distinction. Mm -hmm. how is, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure. I agree with that entirely. But I can. It's so I can. Right. That's that's short. That's a short hand. It is a short hand, but uh, I think it's a short hand. We should be careful about using in okay. this case. Um, the. So I I find it surprising that the. What one thing I find surprising is that there was no awareness that the, that there was a conflict because I know that this has been discussed before and that when we when we added the checkbox to start with, there was discussion about why this was a compromise and um, yeah. you know there, there, people were um, people were making arguments in various different directions. Um, and I the thing that I find surprising was that uh, that it was then something that was just a matter of bug to edit after the fact, despite the fact that it was a big discussion the last time. This one? Yeah. Um, they don't know our yeah. No, 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 they were there. Oh, this one? <laughs> yeah. They were there. Yeah. You yeah. There is, there is yeah. some, without delving into too many, without... I, I don't want to... That is just too much right now. I think there was yeah. more, more of an understanding of, of, of things than were expressed in that way. Yeah. Okay. The, well, one thing yeah, I would say though about the sort of process, how do you fix this sort of cultural problem? Mm -hmm. I think ETS is incredibly important. Yeah. Because yeah. it's a place where so. non free software, non people often run into physically free software people for the first time in large numbers. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the, the thing I think that uh, UDS is not yet brilliant at is making sure that those people actually cross fertilize rather than. Clustering. Form the right yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Before we, we're just about running out of time. There's one issue I did want to bring up, which was, and just get some preliminary feedback. 
how useful is the Ubuntu release mail list? Because it was feeling pretty stale and dead to me, mm -hmm. other than my posts. And um, Scott's was participating with me, so thank you. But for the most part, I'm trying to figure out, is that an effective communication vehicle? Or should we I should just basically go to Ubuntu Devel for most of the discussions. Exactly. I think I've always regarded it as kind of, it got bug mail and that sort of thing, but it wasn't. Uh, I, I find that? too many mailing lists difficult to follow generally. Yeah, right. 220 mailing lists. It's on my community discussion agenda. Okay. But, but, I mean, what, what I would say about that is I think the fact that it is rarely used uh -huh. is good. Because then when it gets used, I actually pay, whoa, that's on the release team list. I should pay attention to it. It's like a line. Well, yeah. yeah, it's just that it's, you know, but, but I, 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 I've months, gone so. and was looking at it, and like, you know, I'm not sure that all the people I want to see things are subscribed to it even. Right. And you know, so I, it, it's a self-subscription list. I'm subscribed to a lot of lists that I don't read regularly. My yeah. email situation mm -hmm. has got to the point where I tend to only read lists when I'm pointed at them. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I think if you, if you actually want to make sure to reach mm, release team members, it's probably better to contact the team in, in, in Launchpad. Yeah, because that sends out email individually. Yeah, but then you can't respond to that. So, no, and catch right. everyone else. That, that's what I ran into this time was to connect that's up to the release right. team. So I'm wondering, is it general, should I just basically, most of the communication of general release team things just goes to Ubuntu Devel and we repurpose the release team to just be to the release team members so that I can have a response and we can have discussions happening. Although I, you want to have them in open, but I'm not seeing them happening. Yeah. It, it's, it's one of those, it was what, like, how do people yeah, feel from the community side? Like, you we know, need to advertise for capitalization. Okay. So more people subscribe? Yes. Okay. We don't have enough of us that are even realize that the list is there. Cool. <laughs> Including probably me because there were like two posts in the last year. So well, that's right. it. I'm like not generally aware of it. I'm, I'm fine to keep yeah. it going and go for it if mm -hmm. it starts to pick up some traffic. But if it doesn't pick up traffic, I'd rather just go to a bunch of develop and cut down on the list I, and I, use I, it I, for I, a one-to-one. -one. Right. I mean, I think what you just said is good. The idea of that list being a list for members of the release team to have an internal or public discussion. Yeah. I suppose it, it's uh, a bucket, right? I, I guess I guess it fulfill I'm reversing what I said, but I guess it fulfills the same purpose that a to release for the IRC channel for yeah, right, that that as distinct from Vintage Develop, it's just more focused. Well, it, it's more focused. The thing is, and it's, it's more a it's more it's a symptom of the someone. fact that we use IRC so heavily. Right. Um, um, yeah, we do. So, I feel really bad because David didn't get a chance to talk about his. So his slides are one, available yeah. publicly, and oh, he's going to yeah. link them from it's the. On the page. Oh, so cool. Is, okay. Yeah. So. so and, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. Bring you back and have a follow-up discussion tomorrow. Right? So, you you may want to. Basically, the, yep. the DX team has been doing some plan thinking and planning about how to integrate better with the Ubuntu release um, cycle yeah. next this time around for our new. Good. Um, what's the channel? Okay. So I think that. Was that facing the microphone? Facing the microphone, was that? What do you mean? Is that what JB Shaman means? I think it's a joke about educating people, you know, the whole orientation okay. thing. Uh, okay. I don't know, I might be wrong. Uh -huh. I'm assuming. The question of the exclamation mark. Okay. Um, so any feedback you could give them would be incredibly valuable. So, on the so action is anyone in this room who wants to give feedback on what David Barr is posting? Okay. So we'll talk about that. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.